Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next Star Wars video. In this one I want to give my thoughts on all of the recent uh, Star Wars uh, TV show, movie, animated series projects that were announced due to the Disney Investors Meeting event that happened uh, I guess yesterday at this point. So lots and lots of Star Wars news. Uh, I'm going off the StarWars.com news article called uh, Future Lucasfilm Projects Revealed. Uh, you can see some of them kind of teased here in the uh, kind of tagline for the um, article. But yeah, let's just get straight into this. A lot to cover here. So um, first up, Rogue Squadron, which is going to be the next Star Wars feature film. Um, and the director here is going to be Patty Jenkins. And it's going to be, of course, about introducing a new generation of starfighter pilots as they earn their wings and risk their lives in a boundary-pushing high-speed thrill ride and move the saga into the future era of the galaxy. Um, I'm not sure where exactly I meant to place that in the timeline. Future era of the galaxy, that almost implies like post-sequel trilogy, but usually Rogue Squadron in like the video games and like comics books and stuff like that that's referenced it has been a sort of like original trilogy, like rebellion fighter pilot group. Um, so I'm not really sure what to make of that. Um, either way, that seems to be what they're going for here. Starfighter pilot centric story uh, and 2023 release date. So quite a while away, three years away from this. Um, obviously not the, I, I wouldn't exactly for the next Star Wars film that's confirmed, I wouldn't interpret what th this as like the main plot as being the, them really kind of swinging for the fences type thing. Um, this seems pretty low-key almost, I'd actually say, for the next Star Wars movie to... Um, I, I guess this is potentially like Rogue One did well, so let's set something in that era. Uh, I'm pretty sure it is going to be original trilogy because I think I did watch this and after she she talks about like her own history and stuff like that, she does walk over to an X-Wing and it seems very rebellion focused. So I think that's what they're going for here. Um, and I guess Future Era of the Galaxy is just the Rebels trying to improve the galaxy is more what they mean here. Again, this depends on characters. Um, they're talking about new generation of fighter pilots, which implies it's going to be mostly new characters, I guess. And maybe they'll have a, a, a character we know about be their like mentor. So I don't know, like what, wedge teaching kind of rookie pilots or something like that. That'd be, that'd be fairly cool. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't say I'm like overly excited about this, but given the, the issues they've had recently with Star Wars movies, I appreciate them not not trying to overcomplicate things in a way. So just a simple sort of one-off movie, fighter pilot focused, kind of in a way going back to the roots of Star Wars and that like episode four is kind of a fighter pilot movie in itself and that it builds up to a big fighter sequence so that's um pretty cool next up uh, untitled taika waititi film and yeah they, they basically have nothing to say about this it'll be fresh unexpected and unique okay i suppose unexpected is perhaps the only notable word there because you'd, you'd hope something new is fresh and unique um and yeah, like, he's he's proven himself, I think. You know, Thor Ragnarok was good. Uh, he worked on season one of The Mandalorian, which was good. I have confidence he's going to deliver something pretty good, but they have no information right now. But beyond that, I suppose, this is the next film, so this is going to be the one after that. So it's going to be sometime after 2023. So we're going to be waiting quite a while for whatever this movie is. But next... This is, to me, the most hyped one in the article. Star Wars Obi-Wan Kenobi. Confirmed title there, that's what it's called. Obi-Wan Kenobi, his full name. And the details that they give here, of course, are the series begins 10 years after the dramatic events of Star Wars Revenge of the Sith, where he faced his greatest defeat. Um, the downfall and corruption of his best friend and Jedi apprentice, Anakin Skywalker, turned evil Sith Lord Darth Vader. The series is directed by Deborah Chow, uh, who helmed memorable episodes of season one of The Mandalorian, 
But here's the big one. Hayden Christensen is returning as Darth Vader. And then interestingly, this will be the rematch of the century, implying that we are going to get an Obi-Wan Kenobi versus Darth Vader showdown before episode four, which seems really, really interesting. And it makes sense. We're set 10 years after the Revenge of the Sith, meaning that Luke's only going to be 10 here, meaning that there's at least, what, eight to 10 years until episode four happens. And, you know, if, even if you say uh, Darth Vader and Obi-Wan haven't seen each other in quite a while ahead of episode four, this still fits that, that maybe they did have a, a fight 10 years ago and then 10 years again before that. This all fits. I, I'm really, really happy about this. Um, I think this is going to work really well in that it's like stemming off of the prequels. It's kind of, I suppose, closer to the prequels almost than it is the originals. Uh, it's, I suppose, going to be interesting to see how they portray Darth Vader in this and then what exactly they do with Obi-Wan because we're building eventually to the Darth Vader stuff, but it's going to have to be partly him on Tatooine. Lots of interesting stuff, though. I think the thing I'm most excited for is that, okay, Hayden Christensen, Christensen's coming back as Darth Vader, meaning we're going to see him in the armor. But I think part of the reason they brought him back is that this also means we probably will see maybe a slightly different side of Darth Vader. I think more of him maybe on his own, reflecting on things. Some of the stuff that you see of him in like the comics where it is a sort of more emotional character. And I think you need Hayden Christensen who showed that kind of more emotional side of Darth Vader in Anakin and if they can show scenes of him you know in his sort of you know chamber where he takes some of the armor off it makes sense that you show it as like I suppose a heavily makeup um and uh, Hayden Christensen and then also if they want to it opens the door to flashbacks where you have Hayden playing Anakin again like in the Clone Wars um in that like if you go back into the Clone Wars you can have him have like a slightly different look than Revenge of the Sith and I think you can make that work even though even if it though it's you know 15 years since Revenge of the Sith I, I still think that can potentially work they have the technology to make the, the characters look younger if they need to and I'd love to see Aiden Christensen wearing the kind of Clone Wars era armor and um, so 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 excited for that um I think this is really going to deliver. They didn't give any dates or anything like that, but, uh, you know, still very exciting. Probably the second most exciting thing in this article is the announcement of Ahsoka. So Ahsoka is getting her own sort of standalone live action series. Um, written by Dave Filoni, um, executive produced by Dave Filoni, John Favreau. That's your star creative team. That's the, the main takeaway from, like, I suppose the last few years of Star Wars is that Mandalorian is the centerpiece of Star Wars right now, and these two are the stars of the show. And they already have done Ahsoka well in her debut episode, um, and I have complete confidence that her own series, she's going to work exceptionally well. People already love her from the Clone Wars and Rebels, and now her recent appearance. This, I think, is going to work. And you've already done most of the setup. You've, you've almost used her appearance in The Mandalorian as a bit of a kind of backdoor pilot, in that we know she's searching for Thrawn, you add in the stuff from Rebels and like her and Sabine looking for Ezra, Ezra's related to where Thrawn is, it, it seems to all come together. So very, very exciting stuff. And of course, Rosario Dawson playing Ahsoka, you know, there, there's no way that was only a one-time thing. Makes complete sense. Very, very exciting stuff here. Um, Star Wars Rangers of the New Republic. Set within the timeline of The Mandalorian, this new live-action series from executive producers John Favreau and Dave Filoni will intersect with future stories and culminate into a climactic story event. So another Mandalorian spin-off um, by John Favreau and Dave Filoni. And I suppose what they mean by that is that there's going to be a crossover event between this and The Mandalorian and potentially Ahsoka, where all three series or two series will come together to make some really big thing happen. I would like to know at least a character who is featured in this in that Rangers I guess are different than Marshalls so it's not immediately that it's like Cara Dune is the star of this um, this show. I don't know maybe they'll do something in the last episode of season two of The Mandalorian um, next week and they'll explain what a Ranger is but other than that I'm a, I'm a, I'm a little 
confused by this exactly where they're going to go uh maybe the new republic is going to be more of a focus as we as we go into season three of the mandalorian and that will kind of tie into this um but again they they probably needed to announce who the the star is who the main character is right now it's just a little bit like it's like mandalorian amazing ahsoka amazing rangers of the new republic okay i trust you guys um but i don't really know what to make of it right now um but yeah uh next up lando everyone's favorite scoundrel lando calrissian will return in a brand new event series for disney plus justin justin simeon is going to be the director to develop the story um event series i guess just means it's probably only going to be a couple of episodes so this probably was something they were maybe considering doing a movie about and they thought no it'll fit better on disney plus which i ultimately agree with i like lando um but he's by no means my favorite character i liked lando in uh, solo and i guess it's going to be that era for lando so they'll bring back that actor um who was good as lando uh, that makes the most sense uh i I just don't know uh, right now until they reveal more of the details about the plot and other characters involved what exactly it's going to be about but I think they're taking the right approach with that that one doesn't need to be like a multi-season long um, series so just a few episodes makes complete sense uh, next one Star Wars Andor this is the one we've known about for quite a while Cassian Andor getting his own show it's going to be a tense nail-biting spy thriller by Tony Gilroy coming in 2022 so we get a date here Diego Luna's back, um, more of the cast, new cast, uh, Mon Mothma is going to be in it of course, and production kicked off three weeks ago in London, and if you watch the sizzle reel video there, it does have some behind the scenes work on the, the three weeks of production that they've done, so that one's actually started production, which is good to see, and uh, this is similar to Lando, uh, Cassie Andor was not like a character who like super stood out to me from rogue one he was like fine cool um but like worthy of getting his own series was not what came to mind after i watched rogue one i think this one is more going to be about the fact that it's a rebel spy thriller rather than cassie and andor specifically i think tonally this one's going to be very interesting because one thing rogue one got right was cassie and andor being this rebel spy presenting that he is willing to go to the extremes that sort of the empire is willing to go through to help the rebellion and so it being a little bit more i suppose on the gritty side of things i think is actually going to help things uh spy i suppose means we're not going to be particularly involved in a lot of the ground battles it's going to be more sort of behind the scenes stuff maybe involved with a lot of the you know criminals of the world so bounty hunters might come into play a little bit more i can see this one being a sort of surprise hit when it comes out that maybe right up until we get the first like proper trailer there's not a lot of people who are super excited for this but then this one's going to suddenly kind of hit and be a real um surprise hit sort of out of nowhere uh, that's that's my impression of this um that the excitement will build and everyone's going to be like wow this was actually really good i wasn't expecting it uh, the Acolyte. Uh, this is probably my third most hyped one from this list. Leslie Headland, uh, Emmy Award-winning uh, creator of Russian Doll, brings a new Star Wars series to Disney Plus with The Acolyte. The Acolyte is a mystery thriller that will take the audience into a galaxy of shadowy secrets and emerging dark side powers in the final days of the High Republic era. So immediately, High Republic era, really, really cool. They are immediately committing to their new publishing era, the High Republic, which is getting books in January. After all those books were delayed from, I think they were meant to be out a few months ago. Now they're coming out in January. This whole po project that they have built around this new era, they're immediately committing a Disney Plus show to it. That speaks to the confidence and I'm really excited for this. So the High Republic era, as far as we're aware, is set 200 years before the prequel era. So like 200 years before The Phantom Menace. Um, that's a really interesting time period in that we're not going so far back that we're in the Old Republic. 
Um, so we're in this sort of transition period between sort of like the Jedi sort of being more like they were in the Old Republic and being more like they are in the prequels. And that's kind of interesting. Again, we still have to see what the High Republic is like once the, the novels and stuff like that launch. But just this time period, not really fleshed out in pretty much any media, um, is really cool because they've got a lot to work with. I think the most exciting thing for me about this is that High Republic... It's the only era that it seems like Disney are willing to cover where there actually are a lot of Jedi around. Uh, everything else is set in an era where either we know there's only a handful of Jedi because of Order 66 or it's like we're in the sequel era where once again we've really not many Jedi around. High Republic means we've got lots of Jedi. We've also got the Sith plotting in the background which seems to be what this is about. Emerging dark side powers I hope when they say that, that this really does mean that it's about Sith. I hope it's not just sort of like dark side assassin and that the Sith are actually involved in this in some way. Because I think what we've been missing from Star Wars in this new Disney era where they've you know decanonized a lot of the old EU is we've, we've missed series focusing on the villain perspective and that like novels like the Darth Bane trilogy, books like Darth Plagueis, who, which focus on the Sith, explain to you more about what the Sith are about, which we don't really get in the movies or most of the main novels, and we basically have no information on in the, the new Disney era. This is your ability to do that. And because of the era that you're in, and if it is Sith, you're effectively talking about the Sith like, I suppose, five, six Sith before like Palpatine or something like that, that we eventually have to get into Darth Tenebris, Darth Plagueis, Dar um, Darth Sidious, Palpatine. Um, but the characters before that, since it's, you know, 200 years ago before that era, you know, we're, we're talking about a lot of the Sith who really helped the Revenge of the Sith plan sort of come into fruition so Palpatine could do what he did. Palpatine and Plagueis could do what they did. Um, that's what I really hope that this focuses on. So right now I'm being sort of hopeful and that like it's going to really deliver. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. This one probably has the most potential to deliver well beyond what I think it is. But also the most potential to maybe disappoint if they stay away from the Sith side of things. But it's hard to see that like an era where the Jedi are sort of in the ascendancy. Uh, that emerging dark side powers doesn't mean Sith. But we'll wait and see. Um, next, Star Wars The Bad Batch. So, The Bad Batch are getting their sort of own sort of Clone Wars spin-off show. It's cool that it's set in the post-Clone Wars era, but I'd much rather they just sort of continued the Clone Wars and just did, like, scattered episodes, kind of like the, what was it, season six that they did, where it was just kind of all over the place with where they were set, um, and you could do more bad batch stuff if you wanted to rather than now it seems like we're locked into okay it kind of has to be all about the bad batch i just didn't find this group the most intro the most interesting group of clones in their arc in the clone wars i felt like they almost like overstayed their welcome a little bit now i think part of that was that they hyped up season seven on the basis of ahsoka and they started us off with an arc that didn't include ahsoka and it was quite long for what it was the, 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 the benefit here is that you're in this plus Clone Wars era. I suppose we're going to establish that because they're modified clones, they weren't affected by Order 66. And them doing mercenary missions in the aftermath means that they're sort of a separate faction out there on their own. That seems interesting to me. What are the big missions they're going to be involved in? And why have they decided to focus an entire series on them? That suggests that something they do is very important to the universe going forward. Um, because, like I said, I don't think they stood out that much, so they're obviously going to do something important in this series. So I think this will be fun when it comes out, but I need more information. You know, tell me what your key selling point is on this. What are they going to do? Um, Star Wars Visions. This is really, really cool idea. Presenting all new creative takes on the galaxy far, far away, Star Wars Visions will be a series of animated short films celebrating Star Wars through the lens of the world's best anime creators. The anthology collection will bring 10 fantastic visions from several of the leading Japanese anime studios, offering a fresh and diverse cultural perspective to Star Wars. 
this seems perfect. For anyone who, I suppose, doesn't quite get what they're going for here, if you're a Halo fan, Halo Legends is basically the Halo version of this, where anime studios did their own short films, like little episodes of animation, all done in different animation styles, all focusing on a different style of story, type of story, uh, just within the Halo universe. Anthology style, so they're all over the universe, and those ones in Halo had a mix of, some of them were very heavy lore focused, some of them focused on like one of the species within Halo very specifically, a few of them were more action orientated, being really like stylish in their action one of them was sort of a non-canon more comedy um focused one but all of them were very creative and clever and um, the big hope that i have here is that they are all like unique stories that they're not just doing a sort of anime version or adaptation kind of clip show type thing of like you know one of the uh movies or something like that that they are their own unique things and that I love that like one or two of them were prequel era stuff, you know, original trilogy stuff, one's a Mandalorian focused type thing. That's kind of what I want from this. And uh, I'm excited to see, I suppose, once we get more news on this, like which anime studios they're they're doing, they're, they're going to use for this and what they focus on. I think this is going to be uh, really, really exciting. So that's really cool to see. Next up, a droid story. Uh, okay, new stories. Intersection of animation and visual effects offers new opportunities to explore. Lucasfilm Animation will be teaming up with Lucasfilm's visual effects team, uh, Industrial Light and Magic (ILM), to develop a special Star Wars adventure for Disney Plus, a droid story. This epic journey will introduce us to a new hero, guided by the legendary duo R2D2 and C3PO. Okay, so this seems like it's going to be this one-off thing. They're talking about that um, develop. A special adventure called the droid story I get the imp the way that reads to me is that it's a one-off thing the fact that they're doing this new sort of animation plus visual effects it's gonna be Lucasfilm animation plus ILM means I guess it's just gonna be a really sort of high budget interesting style animation uh, as R2D2 and C3PO help to introduce us to a new hero I wonder what that means. I wonder what era this is set in. Because this this actually could be one of the only like sequel era things on the list. Um, otherwise, I, I actually just have no idea. Because R2-D2 and C-3PO can't be High Republic. Um, I doubt they're going to introduce a new hero during the prequel, original, or original trilogy. So I guess it kind of has to be either sort of Mandalorian era or full-on sequel trilogy. Uh, sequel era or post sequel that they're doing this with um so that 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 seems kind of interesting um this will be more of a like because it seems like a one-off thing just that that'll drop and it'll press everyone and we'll go from there but uh yeah um i like r2d and c3po they didn't get much of a focus in the the sequel so here's i suppose their opportunity to shine and then this is just some of the extra Lucasfilm stuff that's not Star Wars. So, you know, overall, um, I'm pretty happy with a, with a lot of these announcements. I, I, I appreciate the switch into everything's going to be TV focused. I think they had to do that after the success of The Mandalorian and the, you know, relative failure of the sequel trilogy. It made sense. Focus more on TV rather than uh, movies. And... I get the impression that they've been planning this for quite a while, but it ends up working out, I think, pretty well for them as well, given that COVID, the thing that's probably hit the most is movie theaters, so not really having a lot of movie content necessarily is probably working out well for them and for Disney Plus as well, in that, like, only two of them are films, and it seems like they're starting off pretty safe with, with Rogue Squadron, which should be good. And then we'll get, I suppose, a more uh, unexpected movie, I suppose, as they start to be a little bit more um, uh, risky, I suppose, with the movies that they put out again. So, you know, th th there's still some intrigue here. But yeah, for me, uh, star of the show here is I think I'm even more hyped for Obi-Wan Kenobi. He's my favorite character. And just hearing that Hayden Christensen is going to be back, hearing about the timeline of when it's set, it hits all the boxes that I want to tick for that show second most hyped for Ahsoka just because she already it was well done in the episode that she debuted in Mandalorian and I have complete confidence in this creative team 
Uh, third most hyped uh, is the Acolyte, but it's very dependent on if they hit the notes I kind of want it to hit. Uh, if not, probably my third thing would be Star Wars Visions. Uh, I just really like the idea of Star Wars plus anime, and if this is the Star Wars version of Halo Legends, I'm full on in for that. Uh, but you know, that's that's not to say anything bad about it. Like I think Andor will be a surprise, surprisingly good once it comes out. Uh, same with Lando. Really want to know more about this right now because it feels like okay, it's tied into the Mandalorian in some way, but. What does it mean? Uh, is is the main question I have coming out of that, um, and yeah, the Bad Batch. I think I'm not particularly overly excited for it right now, but when it comes out, I'm sure I'll be super excited when it's finally there. It's just nice to see finally, you know, Star Wars has felt a little bit like there's been not a lot going on. Then the Mandalorian came back and it's hyped again, and now they're trying to continue that hype going on forward. And again, it is notable. Nothing really sequel related as such. Maybe a droid story, the only place it can be said is sequel, but we don't even know that. But nothing big in the sequel era, which is kind of interesting, but also makes sense. So um, they're my thoughts on all of these new Star Wars announcements. In the comments, let me know what your thoughts are on everything. I suppose uh, to start off some discussion, like I gave at the end, what are your top three from these announcements? Uh, definitely let me know in the comments below. But that has been the video. Thanks for watching and bye.